uh, number six was the dinner scene. I thought that was such a great scene. Um, such a great scene. Um, and it kind of shows... I think the scene was the one of the most the best parts of the scene is that it starts off. Let me just get to it. It starts off with Renera and um, Allison sitting apart from each other. Look at them in this scene. They're both sitting apart from each other. They're not speaking at all. They're not communicating with each other at all. And I thought it was very interesting um, how at the end of the scene they were holding hands. You know, in the same position actually but uh, standing in front of the table the, 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 at the end of the scene, but they are then now holding hands, which kind of shows a version of unity. This unity was for Viserys' death, or Viserys, just to appease Viserys, but I think genuinely in this moment, we they, they see the hum humanity in each other and their friendship. I won't say it was restored or repaired, but they were able to accept each other for who they were or remember this is the person that I grew up with this as a child this was my best friend as a child and in that moment it's like they get to experience the the former friendship that they used to have it's a very powerful moment see them holding hands right in front of the table in the same position that they were sitting in before um auto high tower there <laughs> Uh, so very interesting how that worked in that scene. Um, but this dinner was all about unity. It was all about how the, the family comes together for Viserys. This is, I feel, I feel like this was his dying wish just to see his family get along one more time, just to see them, you know, we've seen all the, the tension, we've seen all the fighting, the dynamics and Viserys, like I said, his, his, his purpose or his, underlying theme is duty versus love and the irony is that duty versus love um the way that he interpreted it actually caused the end of his or, or the division of his family but well all he ever wanted was unity and it's clear that the realm obviously is only united because he's alive even down to his family they can sit in that room together dine together because he is alive. And then I think, okay, in this scene, it's so interesting because, you know, we, they come in this scene, there's tension in the room, nobody's talking. King Viserys, you know, gets up and tells them, unite, please. He's begging. This is his dying wish. I hope that when I die, you guys will be united. Because when you think about it, Daenerys wasn't this man, polygamous man that was marrying multiple women and his families are fighting. No, this was a man that was in love with his wife. His wife died. And in order to fulfill his duty, he had to have, continue to have offspring. He had to continue to, that, that was his duty, to have as many offspring as possible to ensure that the Targaryens remain in power. But if he was going to do what his predecessor did, he would have passed this throne to Aegon to avoid any fights. But he did not believe that because what I mentioned before, because Rhaenyra is 100% Targaryen, unlike um, Aegon. Um, and so this is why. But I think he should have done a better job of communicating that um, or his views on it instead of just being this, I'm king and it is law because you cannot enforce law when you're dead. Um, so I think he should have done a better job at that. But uh, it's always in these situations, these men, they, they never really can do that. So he's there pleading for his family to get along. And, and who is the first person that gets up of course it's Renera, because when it comes down to it you could say everything you want to say about Renera, but she was raised to be a queen she is fit for the role she's dutiful she's the bigger person and this is why she gets up and she she sort of supports the unity of the family as the heir as the one um that's going to lead the family the future of the family she gets up first and she makes amends she thanks um Alicent with gratitude and apology because at the end of the day you can say all you want to say about Alicent she stood by that man's side she took care of him all of his life she was the best wife that she could be no matter what you will say even though he doesn't love her as much he still has shown that he loves all of them his whole family but when it comes down to it Alicent has done a good job taking care of the king Yes, sure, she has her own selfish agenda, but she's only human. Everybody has their own selfish agendas. 
so when it comes down to it when it comes down to it I <laughs> um Rhaenyra you know extended the olive branch first as the, a queen would because she's the bigger person and Alicent accepted it because of her maturity allowed her to see well this was the person that was my best friend and I think I think that's kind of her inner conflict but when it comes down to it I think that she's accepted that for her survival it is better that her son sits on the throne so that's that and then the next part that was interesting is who was the next person to get up it was Renera's heir because again he was raised to be an heir but it's so funny after well before he even gets up let's get let's address the fact that it was such a powerful moment how they all accepted each other and there was peace then Alison's wayward son Aegon gets up and starts tormenting it's like they ignored everything that was done and gets up and starts tormenting um Gisseris. but Gisseris gets up and, and composes himself like a king does composes himself even though he's pissed with the stupid uh, things that his cousin is saying gets up composes himself and it just kind of shows you the conflict between the high towers who don't understand what true what it really means to yield power and to sit on the throne and the targaryens who have done this historically alicent and otto were unable to raise their children or their offspring for the throne and Rhaenyra, who has always sat in the throne, Rhaenyra and Daemon, who understand what power is, have always raised their children, their offspring, to do just that, uh, take power, take the seat of power. I also want to address the generational, uh, the generational uh, beef and how it starts with Otto Hightower and Daemon. That's where the beef starts. And then Renera as well. Then it goes to Renera and Alicent. And then it goes to A A Gisseries and Aegon with their little like I don't think it's a the thing about Aegon is I don't think that he really cares. We see him like amused whenever there's a fight. I don't think he really cares about the beef. Um but he's just there just like phew having a good time i don't think he really cares uh apart from like obviously he wants to survive he doesn't want to die uh but i don't think he's malevolent um like his brother seems to be then we have the last the second sons and their beef as well because remember it is uh the second son renera's second son that took a amon's eye right took amon's eye so there's this generational beef um, that's going on between them and it's a very interesting dynamic how yes sure the adults may get along because they're mature but the children are always going to be petty and the the beef with them is too deep right now for you guys to make amends because if you were going to make amends you would have united them as children now they're young adults and some are teenagers there's no way they're going to get along at this stage um then we have the fa the scene the next scene where they bring the pig and uh, the, uh, Rhaenyra's second son starts laughing and we can't help himself because they used to make fun of him. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, let's remember that Eamon lost his eye due to this boy. So whatever the case is, Eamon is going to be resentful. He's not like, I lost my eye. Sure, I have a dragon, but I lost my eye. And you're still laughing at me for the pig? Well, then let me make fun of you for being a bastard. So this is where the moment was, they finally united I see him laughing finally united he's laughing at the pig and now it's the time for the second sons to fight with each other and we know Eamon is a skilled warrior at this point not warrior because he hasn't fought any real battles but he's very skilled um in battle and it's so funny this scene tries to call them bastards again i almost feel like their their house uh word should be say it because they always love saying say it say it call me a bastard right um those should be their house words um but what is interesting here is well allison is pissed off again allison has absolutely no control over her son her sons they're wayward they just do whatever they want and they don't even listen to her at this point you know she has absolutely no control she warns him after they you know they've united why are you doing this uh, and then they get uh, it's so funny how they go for each of their rivals right 
So that's one thing, or they go for each other. So this is this shows that the beef is deep, and there's no way that they're even going to stop this beef at this point. It's already been passed on to the, to the children, and this happens the second the king leaves, which is kind of foreshadowing that shows the second the king dies, the fight is set to begin. Let me move on to the next part. Um, it's here where Eamon is obviously not trying to listen to anyone or listen to his mother. But notice how when these guys run, but Damon says, stop, he stops immediately on command, on Damon's command. Kind of shows you Damon's power. And Damon stands in front of him. And, you know, if we did read, if you guys read the books or you saw the folklore video that I posted and some other people have posted it, Damon actually battles Eamon. And this is foreshadowing for their battle that is yet to come. Um, it's going to be an interesting uh, fight to see the, the duel between the two of them. Um, and then obviously at the end of the scene, Renera says, when they finally make amends, Renera says, I will return by on Dragonback. I will return on Dragonback. And for me, that is again foreshadowing uh, for the war that's yet to come. Because I think the next time Renera is going to be in King's Landing, is going to be on Dragonback to fight this battle and to kill Alicent. Um, so actually, it's ironic that she said that, but even though the last time they're holding hands and they're at peace, the next time it's going to be war and she's going to be having her dragons kill Alicent or, or whatever her goals are. Uh, but I think that was great foreshadowing um, for that moment. I will return on Dragonback. And it kind of just shows you how fickle their relationship really is. Even though they were, they started off as friends, when it comes to survival and taking care of your family, you're going to do everything in your power to take care of your family. 